Welcome to Learning to Code with Python. I'm Chris Bradfield, and I'll be your instructor for this series. These videos are intended for students ages 11 to 14, or about grades 5 to 8. If you're younger than that, you can still give it a try, but you might want to get help from an adult. We're going to be doing a lot of typing. Before we get started, make sure you've already installed Python on your computer. If you haven't, stop the video now and click on the link below for instructions. You will probably need to get your parents' help for that part. If you have any questions about this lesson or any other lessons, click on Asking for Help under the video. That's the best way. If you leave a comment on YouTube, I might not see it, or you might not see my answer. Before we start coding, let's talk a little bit about what it means. What is a program? What do computer programmers do? Well, put simply, a program is just a detailed set of instructions telling the computer what you want it to do. Many people think of computers as being smart. But really, they're very dumb. When you see a computer doing something that seems really smart, it's because a smart programmer wrote the code to make the computer act that way. Without any programs, all of our fancy phones and tablets and even Mars exploring robots would just sit there and do nothing. So now we know we're going to be giving instructions to the computer, but how do we do that? Well, just like people around the world speak many different languages, there are lots of different programming languages you can use to talk to the computer. These are just a few popular ones. You may have heard of some of them. The language we're going to use in this class is called Python. Some languages are more difficult to learn than others, and I really like Python as a good one to learn for beginners. You can think about programming languages like tools in a toolbox. Some tools are good for some jobs, like a hammer is good for driving nails, but not so good at other jobs. You wouldn't use the hammer to cut a piece of wood. Python is what's called a general purpose language. That means you can make all kinds of different programs with it. Python is used to make websites, to program robots, to do science experiments, and to build games. All right, let's open up the program called Idle that installed on our computer when we installed Python. You should see a window that looks like this. This is called the Python shell. A shell is just a window where you can type commands and then see what happens. Do you see these greater than signs? That's called the prompt. That means that's where the computer is waiting for you to type something. So let's go ahead and try our first Python command. When you're finished typing the command, press Enter to see what happens. Now remember, you need to type exactly what you see. The computer's not smart, and it can't figure out what you meant to type. So if you make a mistake, the computer's just going to be confused. So what did we just do here? We gave the computer a command called print. That means that we want it to print something to the screen. And then we gave it some stuff in parentheses, which is what we wanted it to print. The technical term for the stuff in the parentheses is arguments. Most of our commands are going to look something like this, a command and then some arguments in parentheses. Congratulations, you're now a computer programmer. Everything from here on is going to be about learning more commands and how to combine them to create programs to do what we want the computer to do. Now before we go on, I want to talk a little bit more about working in the Python shell. What happens if we make a mistake? You see, I spelled print wrong. What do you think is going to happen? Some of you might have seen this already. We get some scary red text complaining about an error. Don't get too worried when you see red text like this. The computer is just trying to tell you that it's confused because you told it to do something it doesn't understand. Now at this point, you might want to go back up here and try changing what you typed before to fix your problem and you'll find that you can't. That's because you can think of these lines up here as the past. They're the things that you've done already, and the computer's done with them. We can only type down here at our last prompt where the computer is ready to see what we want to do next. All right, that's it for lesson one. In the next lesson, we'll learn some commands to draw graphics on the screen. See you next time.